Hello, everybody. Hey, everybody. Testing out the audio. Let me know how I sound. Do I sound creepy? How about now? Jimbo's, Jimbo says hi, too, I think. I'm sure he'll say hi again in just a second. Um, but yeah, let me know how I sound. Uh, we're doing a giveaway today, by the way. Look in the description, and uh, it's really easy to sign up for the giveaway. It's just literally like giving me your, giving me the email that I need to send you it to. Uh, but yeah, we're giving away a dragon crochet kit to say thank you so much for the 200 likes on the last video. And if this one gets 250 likes, we'll do another giveaway next live stream. So you know, keeping that ball rolling. But yeah, let me know how I sound, uh, and I'll be on in just a second. And maybe Jimbo will say hello, goodbye. I'm not sure if the background audio is too loud or not, so just let me know. Okay, come here and say hi real quick. Go on, say hi. Hello. Jimbo says hi. Here. Come here. Hi, everybody. We're just gonna kick out Jimbo real quick, but he wants hi he just woke up from his nap and if we don't let him out he's gonna be a brat this whole live stream might turn the stream off again but we'll see how you doing buddy how was your nap yeah can you hear him purring <laughs> he's so cute okay we'll be right back Aw, he's yowling out there. Poor baby, I love you. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. 
Yes, adorable fluffy kitty. Isn't it cute? He's so cute. Um, look at the pattern and watch the stream. Okay. Well, hey everybody. I'm having a pretty. I'm I'm keeping the chill vibe going. At least at least mentally. I'm mentally keeping that chill vibe going. Do you like my mug? Got a Jimbo mug with a little ball of yarn. I still gotta get into the shop. I'm sorry. I know it needs to get up into the shop. I have been really slacking on the whole on that whole part of the business, I guess. I don't know. It's it's hard, you guys. There's a lot going on, okay? There's a lot going on. But I'll get this into the shop ASAP. Um, but yeah, let's talk about what we're doing today. Okay, first off, I love you. Hi, how are you? How are you doing today? Are you having a good day? I'm having a good day too. A nice chill day. I woke up crazy late. I don't know about you guys, but I woke up like, I woke up at like 11. It was too late. I didn't go to bed last night, like four though. So, you know, when you kind of weigh the sleep stuff, it's kind of like, eh, it's all right. That's all right. That's not bad. Um, hello to T Savvy and everybody else in the chat. Hope you guys are doing well. <laughs> all right, let's 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 switch cams. Let's talk about what we're doing today. All right, check this out. I got us all set up. I even got our two little characters that we've been making in the past few streams out to uh, give us some uh, attention while we're saying hi. Um, today, we're going to be crocheting the brand spanking new pattern, like fresh, fresh pattern. Came out this uh, week for a little tiny kobold. Yeah, look at how cute he is. He's so cute. So kobolds are kind of like little demon dragon creatures. They're kind of like little mischievous. Think, of, think like goblins a little bit, but more like demonic goblins, kind of. They're kind of like little dragon minions. Um, they're from Germanic folklore, I think. Like originally, they're from Germanic folklore, and they're and they kind of worked like uh, like fairies or elves, like kind of just causing mischief and stuff. But Dungeons and Dragons turned them into these little uh, like dragon kin. I think it was a mix between Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder and just a bunch of different uh, different sources put together. Uh, created these little dragon creatures, and I just thought they were so cute, so I wanted to give them a shot, uh, like, a year or two ago. And the pattern is, it went through a lot of different phases, but the finalized pattern is so cool. I'm just really, really, really proud of this pattern for a few reasons. First off, it is almost no so. You just attach the teeth and the loincloth, but they're super duper easy to attach, and you'll see in this video. The tail is actually made in one piece, which was an update from the rough draft version of the pattern. And do they also steal left socks? I would I, I would guess they do definitely steal left socks. But this is a really quick, easy pattern to make, so it's gonna be kind of fun to do today. We're gonna be making uh, at least one. I'm kind of thinking we make two and maybe even a backpack or something fun for them. I don't know. We're just gonna kind of see where the, uh, where the day takes us. If you want to get the crochet pattern for this, I actually put it up online for free. I'm thinking I'm going to keep it online for free for a week. I might end up coming out with it fully for free eventually, but not until the rest of the patterns in this kind of bundle that I'm creating are finished. Um, that including the dwarves. Uh, I want to update the dragon pattern uh, and update the treasure chest pattern. And I want to finish up a baby dragon pattern. But good news for all that. And I know I'm sorry, I'm going through a lot of detail uh, and you know how the beginnings of these streams work. I kind of talk forever and then we get started. But this is a quick pattern, so it shouldn't be that bad. The So the pattern is available right here, clubcrochet.com slash cobalt. You can find it in the description of this video as well. It's totally free there. Um, and you can check out how the patterns on the website are kind of being built now. There, there's like kind of a new system I'm doing that I'm really proud of. I think you'll like it. Um, uh, but in addition to that, I actually came out with a rough, new rough draft pattern for baby dragons. There's a brand new rough draft pattern that I'm looking for feedback on. You can find this one by going to clubcrochet.com slash previews or clubcrochet.com slash rough draft. Another way to get it is by going to the website, going to the browse page. If you go to like 
um, to clubcrochet.com slash browse, or you go onto the clubcrochet.com and then click the little browse page, you scroll all the way down. You can find the rough draft version of this. It does require a membership level account to access, but I'm looking for feedback right now on how the pattern's written so that I can uh, make sure everything is hunky-dory before I record the video tutorial. So if you wanna give feedback, that now is your chance. Um, but today we're gonna be making the cobalt. You can kind of see how this, this has evolved into this or, or vice versa. Um, yeah. In the cobalt pattern, I do teach how to make it with little tiny wings, which we'll probably be adding to them today, but I don't know, we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, but if you want to crochet this along with me, there's a few things that you're going to need except uh, other than the pattern. That's going to be the materials. Now I'm going to be using all worsted weight yarn today in 100% cotton. You know my dealio. I'm going to be, you're going to need one color for the main color. So I'm going to be using this, uh, this kind of maroon red. I think it's called wine red. Um, I think it's a pretty good red for our first cobalt. I kind of want to do a blue one as well after that, but we'll see how that goes. You'll need a small amount of brown that's going to be for the loin cloth. This is actually way, way more brown than I'm going to need, so we'll only need a little bit of that. And the same thing goes for this white. You'll just need a little bit of this white. Again, this is more than I'm going to need. It's just going to be for the teeth. Because I'm using all worsted weight cotton yarn, I'm going to be using a size G 4 millimeter crochet hook today. It's a perfect size hook to use for the yarn at hand, but make sure to use the right hook for your yarn. So if you use bigger yarn, uh, use a big hook. You'll need a pair of scissors, a needle with a crimped end, and then some safety eyes. I've got six millimeter safety eyes here. Bottle of eyes are in the shop. I still have a few left over and I'm ordering more on back stock. So it's a great way to support this channel. If you want to uh, just buy a bottle of eyes, it comes with a whole bunch of eyes in six or eight millimeters. And I do all the packaging myself now. So I can, I do a little thank you and send it out. So it's a great way to support and just kind of like a cool thing to get. Speaking of supporting, if you want to support this channel. If you really like what's going on here and you think it's cool and want it to keep going, there's a few ways you can help me make that a reality. The first easiest way is obviously like and subscribe down below. If you're not already subscribed, what are you doing? How'd you even find this video? Like that's kind of cool. Let me know how you found this video if you're not already subscribed. But if you're not subscribed, you totally should. Hit the subscribe button down below, like this video. If this video gets 250 likes, we'll do another giveaway next live stream because we're doing a giveaway today, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second too. Um, other ways you could help support, if you really, really like what's going on here and you wanna support monetarily, well, there's a few ways you can do that. The first best way to support this channel is with a Club Crochet membership. Members get early access to future patterns like that little miniature dragon pattern that's coming out in sometime in February. Well, it is February, so sometime this month. Um, they get access to my full library of tutorials. I have so many and I add new ones every single month. Membership start at only $5 a month is a great way to support this channel. You get a lot of uh, access to all my kinds of patterns, including this little dwarf pattern. I do video tutorials for all of them. And like I said, it's only $5 a month. You can even get a free trial. So you can try it out, see if it's something you're interested in. If you don't like it, cancel it. That's totally fine. Other ways you can help support monetarily, we have merch and kits in the store. We've got t-shirts. I'm wearing one of them right now. It's called uh, the pocket monster t-shirt because it's a little orc with a crochet hook. It's super cute. Uh, and stickers uh, and soon mugs, things like that. And then the last way you can help support monetarily is with a tip. If you really like what's going on here and you wanna see me add something to the background, you can support with a tip uh, by going to clubcrochet.com slash tip. And if you do, I'll put something in the background. Um, and Cooper, I swear to God, it's like you know my, you're, you're working with my brain. Okay, Cooper actually just tipped for $10. Thank you so much. Chat isn't working. Super good uh, to know, my bad. Uh, thank you for your support. Let me, I'm trying to get this chat to work again. We'll see if that works in a second. But before we do that, we gotta add something to the background for Cooper because he tipped for 10, so we're gonna add something to the tree that is not yet a tree, it's coming soon. And you know what? Let's do a dragon, right? Like a tip equals a dragon, I think is a completely, completely understandable, completely cool, 
We're going to go with... Actually, let's do the dragon I was just showing. Let's do this, like, light green dragon to the background. Right here. So, Cooper, thank you so much for your support. I'm going to add this little baby dragon to the background for you, unless you have other things that you'd like. Um, it's got little magnets in it, so we can put him on the side of it. If I can get a magnet. There we go. We'll do it. We'll do it with this little... Actually, we'll do it with this guy. Which I also think is from your support. There we go. We'll have it on the side of this. Like that. Boom. Hello. Yeah, you can see him. Cute. Love it. <laughs> you rock. Thank you so much. Um, if you tip for 10, we got you to the, over here. Tip for 25, we'll add you to the scene that we're slowly building throughout the year down here. And if you are wild and crazy and you really like what's going on here and you tip for $50 or more, we'll add you to the Cubes of Glory. And your name will forever be uh, synonymous with the Cubes of Glory. <laughs> Alright, let's have a sip of tea and then let's get hooking. And let's see if the chat compiles. Let's see. We're going to say chat test. Let's see if that compiles onto the screen. I don't know why it decides to be the way it be. But it do be like that. So hopefully the chat will fill up. Okay, let's rock and roll. And hello to the chat. I'm sorry that took forever. We're going to let these guys hang out back here and watch us as we crochet our first cobalt friend. I got the pattern up on my screen. If you, um, someone asked if I could put the pattern on the screen. Um, I, I don't know if I feel super comfortable with that yet because there's already a lot going on on this screen. Um, so, yeah. Carrie, oh, Carrie S about the pro membership. Super good question. Gosh, this chat is a frustrating though, huh? All right, let me see this, hold on. Let's see, will that work? Huh, I don't know why the chat's not working. Hopefully it will soon. Maybe if I go leave it and go back in. Hmm. It's acting funky. Um, someone asked about the pro membership. Oh, hi, Clayton. That's so sweet. Um, how was my day? My day is doing A-OK. -okay. Um, I am tired today, but, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing fine. Um, I'm gonna start with the teeth, by the way, as I crochet this. And I'm not going through the actual pattern in this video. There is a video tutorial for this, and uh, as I said, it's totally free at clubcrochet.com slash cobalt. So if you want to get the pattern, just go there. Um, but I'm not going to be teaching the pattern in this. Okay, so someone asked about the pro membership. Carrie. Okay, so Carrie, we actually had to... Uh, uh, the pro membership was a club crochet membership where you could get monthly kits mailed to your door each month with all the materials you need to make whatever we're making that month. But we've had to uh, put it on pause for a few months. Um, it will be back in a different form in April, uh, if everything goes according to plan, in April. Uh, and I've got something really cool that I'm working on that I'm really excited to share. And I'm tr I'm trying to I'm trying to set it up right uh, and get some feedback from people, but I just haven't been ready to share very much about it yet. Uh, so. Hold tight, hold tight. Especially those who have been specifically asking, like, um, uh, like Cosmo. Uh, someone, there, there's a fan named Cosmo that's out there that emailed me this weekend asking about it. I haven't responded yet because I do want their opinion on the new idea, but I'm just not ready to share it just yet. So hold tight. There is a really cool thing coming out, I think soon. Hopefully April. 
I'm very excited about it. I think about it every night <laughs> and how to make it better and how to make it so it works right. Uh, but it's just not ready to share just yet. But there is gonna be something soon. Um, and I'm sorry in the meantime. And I really, really appreciate your interest in the pro kits in the meantime, obviously. Now, do we make this guy wings or not? I actually think we don't make them wings. So normally, uh, kobolds don't have little wings, but I have done in the tutorial taught how to make, how to add little wings if we wanted to. But I wanna give this guy a little backpack, so it'd be kinda nice to not have wings so they don't get squished with the backpack anyhow. Um, also, it's a lot easier. So eh, it's not that much easier, actually. It's, it doesn't add that much. Um, Ooh, Carrie, you also said that you ordered stuff. Can you contact me at contact at clubcrochet.com? Um, I'd be happy to help out. Uh, if you ordered something from me, it's probably I am shipping it out. Uh, and it might have already been shipped out and you should have gotten an email. Um, but if you ordered it in the past like day or two, then I haven't shipped it out yet. Um, I usually ship things out on Mondays. But uh, yeah, let me know. I I'd, Obviously, I'd like, love to help um, after this. Ooh, a winged backpack. That might work. I think we did. Didn't we make a winged backpack one time in a live stream? I feel like we did. But I don't know. Okay, so now I'm working on the body itself. This is just going to be our first kobold. So we're just going to take it one stitch at a time. Could I put up the link to the pattern again? It's right here, clubcrochet.com slash kobold. It's also in the description of this video. And it's in the... Um, uh, Cooper has been putting it in the chat every now and then. Actually, it's pinned to the top of the chat. So if you go to the chat, it should be at the pin at the top. Ah, oh, man, why is our chat not working? I don't understand how this system works. Why does it break every now and then? You know? Let's see, if I go boom, boom, and then go like that, will it work? I don't know how to refresh the chat. Oh, there we go. It worked. I don't know why, but it worked out of nowhere. Um, we got to take this off, by the way. Um, I know. I know you said that. I know, Cosmo, you said I didn't have to tell you, but I want to tell you. I want opinions on this, so I will be getting to you about that soon. Ooh, donation. Thank you. Oh, my God. Christina. Christina, thank you so much for your support. Okay, let's choose... So Christina supported for 10 buckaroos. Thank you. That's really sweet of you. Let's add, let's see, we do a bonhomal or a burb. Did they make a request? No. Okay, so let's do, let's do a burb. I've got so many burbs here that are just waiting for a home. Let's go with, let's go with our tried and true. The pattern isn't out yet, but an owl. We're gonna do this owl for you, Christina, for your first tip, because I don't think I've ever seen a tip before. I super duper appreciate it. Thank you so much. And let's go ahead and we'll add this to the background real quick. Right, uh, I mean, this guy's pretty cute. We could probably go right there. That doesn't cover up too much, does it? Actually, let's, let's have him share with this toucan up here. Now I know I said, I'm trying to get a tree made for this background. So there's your Christina, there's your little owl. So what I'm working on right now, well, I'm not working on it. I'm getting my dad to work on it because he is a, uh, he has a metal shop. Uh, so what I really want him to do is build a big giant metal tree here, like that big. And then I'm gonna crochet all the limbs around it. And so we can add pom poms to it for tips as well. And because it'll be metal, all these guys have magnets on them so they can attach to the tree. And this tree is just hopefully gonna be filled up. Uh, actually, I think it's gonna be filled up way quicker than I was expecting. So we'll see how that goes. We will see how that goes. And yes, if this video gets 250 likes, we'll do another giveaway. Today's giveaway is for a dragon crochet kit, by the way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's pull this tight. Finally finished our first round. Man, we are slow going today. 
This is what we're making. Or this is this is what the kit's for. So it's a crochet kit to get all the materials and the tutorials, obviously, for making a little miniature dragon, and it's totally posable. Also, I actually added these to the shop. Also, I only have like 40 of them, uh, and then I'll be completely sold out. So if you want to get one, I have red and green dragon kits available for sale. Um, but also, if you want to try to win one, use the link in the description. It is a link in the description. <laughs> All right, Jack and Gurgle. Hi to Jack and Gurgle. Uh, or Jack, Jack and Gurgle. Oh my God, that could also be one. Uh, Jack Gurgle. Three. You have drunk three liters of whole milk. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of. That's too much milk. <laughs> Hugs. Hello. I'll tell Jules to say hi after this. She's going grocery shopping. Oh, thank you, Mel. Yeah, subscribe and like this video if you haven't already. That'd be cool. That'd be date. All right, so we are on round two now. I wish I could show you how the site looks. Well, I guess you can see it yourself. But are all your kits also digital patterns as well? Yes, they are. Yeah, you do get the digital patterns. Milk was a bad choice. <laughs> Zoe. Uh... Zoe, I gotta, I gotta hang out with you in Australia. I feel like we, we would vibe really well. Um, do, but yes, the kits all have um, digital tutorials. They got the video tutorials and the, um, and the uh, PDF pattern too. Okay, finish round one and two. I'm gonna check that off. And then round three. Ah, yes, round three gets a little tricky. We need to make our horns in round three. So we gotta somewhat pay attention, I guess, kinda. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, wow, so many people. Thank you so much for subscribing, all, all, all you people out there. Um, You're an Aussie in Canada? Well, that's even cooler. When will the winner of the giveaway be announced? The winner of the giveaway will be announced at the end of the live stream. So actually at the end of this stream, we will announce one uh, right before I say goodbye. It'll be my, it'll be my outro, I guess. I have got some Jimbo fur that is just floating around my nose. It's trying, it's doing its best. I always call, I call them Jimbo spores because they're like little versions of him that are going around and making people sneeze speaking of spores anybody watch the last of us no spoilers here but if you have been watching the new show last of us on hbo i honestly don't think i've ever watched a show that makes me more scared in real life that i think about after like i think about it all the time it's a scary show not for the faint of heart and uh but it's so good oh my god and the last episode was so so good episode three but no spoilers if you haven't watched it yet and you're over the age of 18 i definitely suggest checking it out but take it slow it is a scary show scary show is scary how do you win i'm just gonna choose someone at random actually carrie Yes, yeah, shipping to the UK is a nightmare right now. So if it is, um, if you do win and you're outside of the United States, I'm gonna give you a, uh, basically a, uh, a gift card for the same price as the dragon or a Club Crochet membership uh, for like half a year or something like that. Um, uh, so you can choose to buy it if you want, but yeah, shipping to the UK right now is crazy expensive, which is unfortunate. Shipping pretty much everywhere that's not domestic is really expensive. And even shipping here, they've raised the prices in, in the United States. So all the prices of my shipping is way more money. For a long time, I wanted to do free shipping on my kits for domestic kits, but it's just not like reasonable. It, it's just so, so, so expensive that I'm, I would have to raise the prices of all my kits so much more. And it's like, it's just not worth it. Okay, so now I'm making round
round three, or round four, rather. You can see how quick this stitches up, though. Look, I'm already at the, like, you can see how I'm at the top of the head already. And because it's all made in one piece without sewing, it's it's pretty quick, pretty quick, easy pattern. I'm, I'm really, really proud of this one, actually. You know, it sat in the rough draft for like a whole year of just me going like, okay, let's give it to the community. Let's see what they say about it. Let's start working on feedback from that. And I'm actually so glad I left it in there for that long because it ended up being a way better pattern because of all the feedback that I got and all the time that I got to like think about how I'm gonna make it uh, work. Specifically how to make the tail without having to sew the tail on. So I'm actually really glad that I had this in rough drafts for as long as it did, but I also apologize. It was in rough drafts for like a whole year. Three, four, five, and six. By the way, if you are a, um, if you've ever played my tabletop game Stitched, one, two, three, four, five, six. If you ever played my tabletop game Stitched, it's a tabletop game that Jim make from home it's war that you craft it's stitched <laughs> it's a tabletop game where you actually crochet all your pieces and then you can play a game with them if you want to learn more about it it's at, just at stitchedthegame.com but this is actually a playable piece in stitched um and the abilities for this piece are really cool uh, i put a lot of thought and effort into how these pieces work so in stitch there's a bunch of different things you can do you can, like uh uh, you can move your pieces around, you can steal from enemy characters, you can fight people, you can, uh, you can, uh, whoa, do you guys hear that crackling? Hold on. That was weird. My, my computer was crackling a bunch, like, the sound is all weird. Um... But in the game, you can do a bunch of different things, and uh, one of the characters you can play with in the game are goblins, which are these little green dudes in the background here. Right back here. There we go. And, um, and kobolds, these little dragon dudes, are very similar to goblins in the game, except they have a very special ability where they can mimic the last action that was done around them for a, for a free action. So... In the game, it, it you have like anywhere between three and five actions on your turn, depending how on what you rolled in the beginning of your turn. And actions can be things like moving around the board and attacking enemy characters, stuff like that. Well, kobolds work really weird and stitched, where you can actually use their special ability to mimic one action that was last performed in uh, near them. So if another character uh, that you have like attacks a certain like attacks another character so you have this goblin here and he attacks this dwarf and you have a kobold right here that's next to your goblin and these are both your characters and that's your enemy's character and this goblin attacks you can use your mimic to attack with your kobold for free uh, once per turn and it it's really weird it's a super duper weird uh, rule that totally it makes a lot of weird strategies in the game where you can like have a kobold with your your troll going to the relic so that you can cast magic spells to try to win the game quicker and stuff and it's just weird it's a weird dynamic i'm a really big fan of it of these characters in the game i think they're super fun and just strange they they totally change the way the game is played i think but their weakness is uh orcs so orcs can mow through them like they ain't nothing at all they just can get all killed by a bunch of orcs just blasting through them um <laughs> i'm super nerdy super nerdy here uh first oh man re has a really good question but okay okay one question at a time let's do re first re says could you possibly do the tail that you do on the kobold on the t-rex yes not only yes heck yes i i so when i came up with how i'm doing this tail right now 
it's i originally came up with it for the raptors which are these the little um let's see where are my raptors yo where are my raptors at where are where are the raptors oh in here probably as well yeah okay so this is what i used this this is where i came up with the tail thing so the raptor actually uses the tail and the raptor pattern came out way after the drag or the dino the t-rex pattern but i loved the way that this is done because there's no sewing and for the t-rex the tail is sewn on which is super duper annoying so i'm actually working on redoing this pattern just a little bit so i can add in this tail addition so it can be made without sewing and so i can fix how these color changes are written in the written tutorial because it's kind of hard to read how these color changes are done in the pattern and i think i can make it a little bit easier oh okay i keep going in and out while i'm talking is that true for everybody is that is that a maybe that's just a sunshine pro problem but let me know if that is an issue for everybody here Let's see, I, I clicked on a thing. No, no, okay, we're all good, okay. I think that might be a problem on your side, Sunshine, but I'm not totally sure, so let me know. Um. Okay, another question someone had was, what are the stats for the dwarf? So the dwarf in uh, Stitched is very interesting also because they're kind of based around, you know, being good at mining and stuff. So the dwarf stats are, wait, hold on, hold on. I I just want to make sure that everything is correct here because it. I'm, I'm having a feeling that I'm off by a stitch. So let me just do a count real quick and then I'll talk about dwarves and stitched. Um, and if I'm talking about stitch too much, let me know in the chat. Like, I really like talking about it a bunch but I can imagine it getting a little like, okay, we get it, Lou. All right, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I think I am off count. Hold on, let's undo this one. I feel like I'm off by one stitch. I don't know why or how that happened, but let me count. That'll be one. One, two, three, four, five, six. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'm actually off by two stitches. How the heck did that happen? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Ah, oh, right here. Oh no, it's supposed to be at 20 stitches. Okay. Okay. I think I'm right then. That's, I don't know why. I don't know why. Okay. But we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. Um, so question the question was about dwarves stats and stitched uh so in stitched dwarves are kind of like your bulky um they can be soldiers but they also are uh, really good at mining for gold and stuff and so their stats are um their health is at 17 hp which makes them a little bit more sturdy than a troll and a lot more sturdy than an orc so they're kind of hard to kill because of that they have two strength and one intelligence, which means that they're pretty good at fighting. They're really good at mining, and uh, they are not very good at things like um, casting magic spells or, um, or uh, well, yeah, that's the main thing that intelligence is used for uh, right now in Stitched. I do want to make other reasons to use intelligence in the game at a later point, too. Um, so that's their health, strength, intelligence. Uh, and the big thing is their speed. So their speed in Stitched is actually slow, which is a one uh, in Stitched. So if you have one on your speed, you move slowly, 
which means that you move the the width of a playing card not the length so let's imagine this was a playing card that would be fast and that would be slow so they move slow uh, which is really important uh, that's a that's a really important distinction because it means that they're also not very good at stealing so if you needed to steal an item they're not very good at that but where the dwarves are super useful other than their HP and their strength being super good for fighting things uh, is their special ability is uh, their prospectors which means that when you go in the game and try to mine at a, um, a treasure, so in the game there's like little spots where you can mine for gold, which you can use that gold to purchase more characters to fight for you and stuff. Well, a dwarf's special ability lets them mine, and if they get a 10 or more uh, for their mining like roll, they are allowed to mine again. Uh, uh, yeah, that's their, that's their ability. So they keep mining if they're really lucky which is really cool um yeah so that's that's the dwarves in the game um okay before should i do it before i go yeah no let's do we'll do one more round and then i'll add the teeth and stuff okay So it starts with a decrease? No, no, no. It's one single crochet and then a decrease. Got it. Um, dragons. Are there dragons in Stitch? So I don't have the I don't have any rules for dragons yet, but I desperately want to add them to the game. Um, it's just really hard to know, like, okay, like how am I gonna make these guys work for the game to make them like not overpowered and currently hold on i gotta turn this music down it's really loud there you go yeah that's good okay um okay so dragons in stitched uh i'm having a hard time making a rule set for them because i don't want them to be overpowered I'm basically kind of thinking that they're going to be really expensive, like 100 gold to purchase them. Oh, by the way, dwarves are 30 gold in the game, so it gives you an idea. Goblins are 15 gold, so they're they're double the price of a goblin. Um, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, so dragons, I want to give them a move that lets them, like, do a flame breath to hit, like, an area of effect damage, you know, so if, like, the dragon was like if the dragon was here they can like shoot everybody in like this as like their ability they can like use their flame breath to attack anything from this or something they'd have probably three or four strength and be pretty smart they'd be super overpowered but really expensive to make them balanced and hard to get Oh, a maze feed is catching me glitching also when I'm talking. It, okay, so that's two people saying that I'm glitching when I talk. Is anybody else getting that? Ooh, Goblin Quinn had a great question. Okay, the Goblin Quinn uh, asks a good question that is actually, I do want to talk about it. Okay, Sunshine and... So they're having the same problem. Ah, a lot of people are having this problem. Okay, one second. Let me turn off my audio and back on.
Hello? What do I sound like? Does this sound alright? I'm using my phone as audio because doing all that screwed everything up. <laughs> How do I sound? How is everything going? I'm going to try plugging my phone in and see if that works. And hopefully it'll just do this for the entire live stream and nothing will be a problem. Can you hear me? How do I sound? How is everything going? Okay. It sounds fine, I guess. Man. I wish I didn't do that. <laughs> um, okay. It's a bit tinny, but clear enough. I could try the audio one more time, but it's just I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna mess anything up. Doesn't sound the best. Okay, hold on. Let's, okay, we'll try one more time. We'll try one more time. Yes, we're gonna try one more time. Was Jimbo eating the wires? No, it's just turning off and on the audio is connected to my camera, so it switches, it messes everything up. And so the audio was just like struggling hard. It ha happened the other day too. What do you think? Do you, do you think I should try to do the audio again? Let's ask. All right, quick question for the stream. Okay, let's keep going though in the meantime. Uh, in the meantime. I'm gonna have to put this somewhere else too. Can I magnetically attach it up here? No. That does not work. How do I do this? Oh, now the internet part's not working too. What the heck is happening? Okay, now I asked a poll. Let me know what you guys think about me messing with the audio anymore. I'm just worried that like you're gonna hear a lot of sounds of me like crocheting, you know? But we'll see. Let me know what you guys think about me adjusting the audio, trying to mess with the audio again or not. In the meantime, I'm gonna keep crocheting and we're just gonna go with this. We're just gonna go with this flow. Okay. Yeah, Becky, this is all I've made so far. I'm sorry. I'm going really slow. I had a lot to talk about, and then the audio got messed up, and it's just like a whole thing. Let me know if I'm talking too loudly also, because the microphone is like right in front of my face now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add the teeth, though. Yeah, I kind of agree with you, Ree. 
I don't know if I should mess with anything just for fear that it messes everything up even harder. It was doing this last, like a couple of live streams ago too. I think there's something wrong with the cord that I'm connecting my audio into my computer with. Which is kind of messing, messing things up just a little bit. But I don't know what I sound like right now. Is it extra loud and annoying? Probably, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, every time I like touch anything, it's super loud. Okay, wait, let's, let's add, at the very, I know one thing I can do at least. I can hook my phone up onto this tripod so that we don't have to worry about it being like annoyingly loud when I touch things. At the very least we can do that. Okay, so I'm gonna Okay, so now you're now we're hooked up a little bit different, which hopefully will make it so like when I'm touching the desk, it's not making too much noise. Um, all right. Oh, Clayton, happy birthday! Happy birthday, Clayton. I hope you're having a good day. Okay, where were we? What were we talking about, you guys? before I was so rudely interrupted by my audio breaking. Hopefully this doesn't mess with the Wi-Fi speed also. That, that's, that's the hope. One and two. Look at that. We got our teeth sewn on. We didn't even need to use a needle. Isn't that something special? Yes, I do too. You don't enjoy your birthday? Well, then I'll enjoy your birthday for you. <laughs> Happy birthday. My uh, my fiance's birthday is on Sunday, actually. So I'm pretty I'm pretty excited for her birthday. Today's Becky's half birthday. Well, a very merry on birthday to you. To you? Ooh, have I been working on any new burbs lately? Ooh, no, I haven't actually. I have been working hard on uh, the the new system that I'm building, for lack of a better way to explain it. And I have not had time. I've been working on new patterns for that, but I'm not ready to share them at all yet. But basically. April should be the release of my new Club Crochet's new membership option is what I'm going to call it for right now. Okay. I got everything but the eyes. So let's add some eyeballs. I really want to start working on my 3D printing because I have a 3D printer that I have never used and I want to really bad. But I've just been oh, slacking. But can you imagine, like, I could 3D print, I mean, eyes, yes, of course, I could 3D print eyes, and I could 3D print custom-made eyes. But even cooler, I could 3D print, like, horns that are attached the same way as eyes are, or I could 3D print, like, 
like arm connections so that you can connect arms to the body so that you can make the bodies like turn or the, the arms like turn around and stuff. There's so many options, but I just have not messed with it yet. I wish I did. Sorry about the audio. I apologize for that. Uh, another, another shout out for that giveaway, by the way. If you haven't yet, go enter that giveaway. Because uh, at the end of the stream, I'm going to give away a free dragon crochet kit, which should be pretty cool. Okay, next we're making arms. We're on the round for arms. We're actually more than halfway done with this pattern already. Even though we've had like an hour of technical difficulties and slow going. So that's kind of cool. All right. Ooh, he made a battle ring with the 3D printer. That's pretty dope. Yeah, Angel, I totally feel that. I wanted the 3D printer so bad. And my actually, my parents gave it to me my Jules and my parents together got it for me for my birthday last year. And between the move and getting all set up and now this whole like business shift change, I just have not had any time at all to play with it. And I feel super guilty about that. But I'm just scared. I'm scared of like opening up the like a brand new world to me <laughs> of like I don't know. I just think I'm going to like it too much. <laughs> such a funny like problem to have but I really do feel like I'm just scared of of being too into it and getting involved in 3d printing a bunch and then like not having time for the things that I actually do have to spend time on but I think that's just like a mental block honestly that I need to get over face is coming together I don't like how this white is poking through the face right there so I'm gonna have to like adjust that and like poke it in and poke and prod like that there we go that fixed it oh he's looking pretty cute so far though we're definitely going to need to customize him a little bit more jenna jenna just started crocheting loves the channel oh thank you so much jenna i hope it's going well for you Making Chubzilla, that's a fun one to make. Yes, uh, oh, oh yes, that's right, Goblin Quinn. I remember where we left off. You had a question about how memberships work. So you are correct, it is a heck of a deal in my, it, it's a good bargain in my opinion. So Club Crochet memberships give you access to all of my patterns, unlimited access. So you can download all my PDFs, uh, watch my video tutorials uh, you have access to all of them and I add new ones every month now I will fill you in on some kind of plans for the distant future um, I'm not ready to do this at all yet but maybe by the end of the year I am gonna change how memberships work so that you don't have unlimited access to patterns you have like access to like three patterns a month and then they like compound so if you don't download three patterns and crochet them in a month then you get another three the next month and you can like download three per month or something like that and then if you finish a pattern and you post a picture you're gonna get that pattern back so you can use it for another pattern so it encourages you to actually go and crochet stuff rather than just downloading a whole bunch and then being done with it but what I'm also planning in that same when I do that is anybody who has a membership before I change how that system works will have a grandfathered in unlimited access membership. So I'm going to make it basically so if you already had a membership, nothing changes, but I'm going to make a new like system there because it is maybe a little too much. <laughs> uh, like $5 a month for all of my patterns is kind of a lot. So I might, I might be changing that at the end of the year uh, but if you have a membership before that you, it won't change anything for you so it is a pretty good bargain uh, and yeah it'll be even a better bargain by the end of the year if I change things and you have a membership prior to everything changing so 
Uh, but I agree, I think it's a pretty good bargain. Uh, Zoe says, ooh, I like that idea. Ooh, okay, good. I'm glad, I'm glad you like that idea. Uh, in, when I do that, though, I will be upgrading, like, I'll make another membership level. Um, I'm thinking of calling it the, like, designer membership tier. Uh, maybe by the end of the year releasing that and with a designer membership you would still have unlimited access to all the patterns but you'd also have access to like a uh, a new system that I'm building where you can um, well first a few things first you'd have access to all these like exclusive designer tutorials so it's about like here's how I go about actively designing Amy Gurumi uh, like a whole series I think I'm gonna come out I want to try to come out with like like 10 to 20 videos uh, by the end of the year that are exclusively for people on that designer membership tier when I release it. Um, obviously, I'm not really ready to do that yet, but it's part of the plan. Uh, and then you also get unlimited access to the patterns, just like you currently have with the membership tier. And I'm making a new system on the website uh, that will let you like build your own patterns using the patterns on the website. So say you want like I'm gonna do the body of a hobgoblin and the wings of a bat and the uh, legs of a yeti and then it'll spit out the pattern for you and you'll have access to that with a designer membership tier. That's kind of the plan that I probably shouldn't have said everything about on the live stream, but I did it anyhow. So yeah, that's kind of the idea. <laughs> uh, let me know what you think about that. Uh, slash, I probably shouldn't have said that out loud yet. To opt into that system to grandfathered member. Yeah, I agree. I think I think it'll be like a a thing where like if you have a regular membership already, it won't change anything for you. It'll just I'll I'll like let you know. Hey, you know you have a special grandfathered in membership that gives you a lot more access than other people have. Um, but if you cancel this, it'll go away. <laughs> and then five single crochets after this. We're actually almost done with our cobalt already. One, two, three, four, five. So there, you can see how the tail's coming together. That's kind of nice, right? It looks funny on the inside, but it's actually really cool. You're just gonna sew this part together and then sew everything closed, and it looks really cool. Hiya, Aisha, how are you? No, no, uh, no, Cosmo, this is not the thing that I was going to tell you in April. The thing I'm going to tell you in April is, like, completely different and uh, just cool. Like, it's a cool new thing. Whereas this, the changing the membership stuff is more like, like, has to change eventually, but not yet. And I don't really want to make any kind of big changes to the way memberships work yet. I'm, let's see, how do I say this? before like without revealing too much what i'm releasing in april is more like it's like a new i'm rethinking how mem kit memberships work so it's kind of like i'm re-releasing kits membership kits but in a whole new way that is really cool and uh, i can't it's cool. I, I promise you that the thing that I'm talking about for April, I in my opinion at least, is really, really cool and uh, only beneficial. It's only a good thing for, I think, everybody involved. Uh, especially the people that were pro members before. I think they're going to be like, oh my god, this is awesome. So, I'm very excited about it. Uh, I do need to get feedback a little bit more, um, but yeah. I'm base, I basically talked to um, a company today because I'm getting I'm basically getting like club crochet branded yarn and one hold on hold on I think I messed this up one two three four five six and then I skip five two three four five oh no that's right okay cool 
Man, sometimes I just like need to go with the flow and not think about what I'm doing, and it works out better. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and then skip. It's right here. Yeah, wow, that works out. Um, yeah, I had a conversation today with the 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 company that's helping me make club crochet yarn. And uh, I found out how much I have to buy up front. And it's very scary. It gets, my stomach dropped just thinking about it right now because it's like, it's a lot of money. But, you know, if it works out right, hopefully it works out right. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see. Oh, good question. Okay, someone says, how many creations total do I think I have made? Ooh, we might be able to do the math on that. Um, okay, so I would say I make on average at least one amigurumi per day. And I've been crocheting for like 15 years. So if we did that math, because some days I make like seven, eight things, and then some days I don't make anything. Let me see. Let's do the math real quick. If, if that is an accurate thing. So 365 times, let's say I've been doing it for 12 years, because three years of my life, like, we're learning how to crochet, and I made a lot of beanies. So let's say, like, 12 years of that. I've made probably over 4,000 amigurumi pieces, somewhere around that. Probably more, actually, because I've sold a lot of them. But, And how many can I make in a single day? What's the max that I've made? I think the max that I can make and the max that I have made are very different numbers. I can probably make, if I did like small patterns like a frog and stuff like that, I could probably make, let's see, I can probably make three in an hour, and I could probably do it for 12 hours. I could probably make like 36, maybe in a day, maybe a little bit more if I like really pushed it, but that's a lot. How many have I made in a day? I think I've made at least 20 in one day, at least. Because some days I go ham, I go crazy. Especially if like I'm on an airplane, if I'm flying somewhere, I make so many because I just have nothing else to do. I'm just like, crochet, 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 listen to podcasts, crochet, crochet. <laughs> but yeah. I just, I like it. I like to crochet. I don't know what else to say about it. I wish that I was super into crocheting like other things too. And I and I do like making certain things, but like I don't like crocheting blankets. It is not fun in my opinion because it's just repetitive and gets really boring. Uh, I like a finished crocheted blanket and I like starting a crochet blanket, but I do not like the act of actually making one because it is exhausting. But I love amigurumi because it takes no time and you finish something. You know what I mean? I've been crocheting almost as long as you've been alive, Trite. That makes me feel very old. I don't think I'm that old, but it sure makes me feel that way. Sheesh. Okay, Becky, thanks for joining. Make sure to enter that giveaway if you haven't already before you leave. Okay, so here's my question with our little cobalt here because we, we're almost actually done with the cobalt. And my question is, do we customize this cobalt a bunch? Uh, making him a backpack, making him like maybe like some outfits and stuff, uh, or giving him hair or something like that? Or do we make another cobalt that's like his brother that's blue? So I'm going to ask that in the chat. So question is, do we, 
Let's say what next? Customize this cobalt a bunch or make a second one. Boom. Okay, let me know what you guys want me to do next. I'm honestly, I'm cool with either of those options because they both seem like a lot of fun. And I have always wanted to make a blue cobalt and I never have, so. A cobalt, a cobalt cobalt? Maybe. Ooh, customize this cobalt a bunch is taking a lot of votes, which is great. I love that. I love a strong opinion because <laughs> I don't have them. I feel like a so a baby cobalt kind of is just like a cobalt, right? Like they're they kind of look like little babies. I feel like a baby cobalt is like just a bonimal, which actually that'd be pretty cute too. Do that. Again, we're testing that pattern out. Uh, uh, if you want to get that pattern, it's clubcrochet.com slash previews. This guy's looking really cute so far, though. Really cute. I like it. He does look short. I feel like I missed a round, but maybe I didn't. Let's see. If I put this one next to him. Doesn't he look like shorter than this one? Eh, maybe not. Is there a backpack pattern published? I don't think there is actually. But we might be able to whip one up pretty quick. Clayton with that fresh birthday. Okay, what are we doing? Looks like we're looking at customizing this guy, which is totally cool with me. But I'll give it a little bit more time just in case. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Comb. This is the fun part. So you do this, right? You sew it closed like normal, but this tail is also kind of open. See how you can see in the tail? So we gotta sew the tail closed as well but it's all done with just one piece so it's pretty easy but I'll get all of my utensils for customizing this guy once we finish sewing them closed there's a lot of customization options that we got at hand you know we can do we can obviously give him like kind of hair or something uh, we can do scars and rings and stuff. Obviously, we should and can give him a backpack. Because who doesn't like a backpack? And I actually have a bunch of things that we could put in a backpack, which would be kind of fun. So let me show you that in just a second. Because I have, I got, I've been, I'm a little prepared. I'm a little prepared. Ooh, a hat. Yes, I love the idea of giving him a hat. I'm always pro giving uh, characters hats to give them like a sense of purpose. So like a, I'm kind of like on the Fez game right now. I'm kind of feeling like a Fez or something like, something like that. I don't think a top hat. He doesn't feel like a top hat guy, but maybe. Look out. I don't know if kobolds have genders. I feel like kobolds are like, Like, I don't know, maybe they do. I don't know. Okay. So, here's the question. Do we give him a loincloth for his... Yeah, we gotta give him a loincloth, right? He's a cobalt. He needs a loincloth. We don't want him walking around Nike. Let's give him a little loincloth. A little loincloth. Cool. 
Cooper's always down for a fez. Ooh, a blue Turkish fez hat. Five Worlds Explorer coming in hot with the suggestions. Let's look at that. Turkish fez is what we're going to look up. I kind of wish I gave him pants instead of a loincloth now. But that's okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Turkish fez is like any, like a fez. Is there a difference between a Turkish fez and a regular fez? I don't know. We're gonna go one, two, three. Saturday Night Live. Oh, thank you. Hi, hi, a ki kiwi. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's an actual kiwi in the chat. Kiwi in the chat. This song makes me feel like I'm floating in space or something. Okay. Oopsies, that was not supposed to happen like that. I was supposed to do a chain. Did I do that? There we go. Okay. Amazefeed says they've tried using cotton yarn, but it's hard for me. What's the trick? Don't crochet too tightly. That's the trick. Chill out. Loosen your hands up. Uh, if you crochet too tightly, it's really hard to crochet with. Um, so yeah, that's my that's my best suggestion there. I don't know what the problem was uh, specifically for you, but I've noticed that that can be a problem for me if I crochet too tightly uh, with with my cotton yarn. It hurts my hand, or it'll just be hard to like make stitches work and stuff so maybe that's your problem that's happening um i don't know Ooh, a green bandana that's a cute idea okay we got bandana we got a fez idea yeah we're gonna have to really like think this through what kind of hats we're gonna give this guy I definitely want to make a backpack though. I, I don't know how we're going to make the backpack attached to him, but I just feel like a backpack is a good move. Maybe instead of a backpack, maybe we make it like a, um, like a, like a, like a side, like, you know, a pack that goes like over your shoulder. Maybe like one of those. And I'll show you all the things that I have to give it to, to add to the backpack. We'll make him a little traveling cobalt. And I feel like the loincloths for other people's uh, comfort, you know? I don't think cobalt need to wear loincloths. I don't even know if they got anything under there. But <laughs> I, I feel like like cobalts are like, no, it'll make people feel more comfortable if we have a little bit of out, or a bit of an outfit. But who knows? Okay. All right, so the main part of the cobalt is done and is super cute, in my opinion. Let's finish that pull up and customize the heck out of this cobalt. Okay, first thing we wanna do is definitely make a backpack, which means that we need brown yarn or, but brown yarn that's different than the brown yarn that we use for the loincloth. So we want like, I think I have some special brown yarn over here. One sec. I found it. I, I was like, where is it? Where is it? I think this would be really nice for a bag for him because it'll contrast the loincloth but still have that like look of a natural fiber that's for his bag. So I think we should do this one. 
I found this really cute stick on a walk the other day that I was like, oh my god, this would be so cute for them. So maybe we could give him a stick to hold on to. It's kind of big though. I was also thinking it could be like on the backpack. Like he found this stick and he really likes it. I don't know. Maybe it's a maybe it's coming off the out of the backpack like that and it's got an umbrella on it. That could be kind of cute. Ideas, ideas. Now I definitely think it'd be fun in the backpack to add this little dagger or give him into his little hand. My dad made me this dagger out of a nail. And it's just so cute. And I've been meaning to use it for so long. I think this is a great opportunity. We don't even need to put it in a backpack, though. We can actually just put it into his loincloth like this if we want. Which is... That's actually... That already is, like, perfect. So maybe we'll do that. I think it'd be really cute in the backpack to add a rope. Like this. Like, he's got a rope that's, like... A, that the backpack is, like, tied around. So he's always got a rope with him. I feel like a traveling kobold should have that. But the creme de la crop, I think. Ooh, golden necklace? I like that. Dice mail vibes. A little leaf hat. Ooh, I like the leaf hat. I really, really like the leaf hat idea. Made, okay, I, I really like that idea. Um, this is the other thing that I wanted to add to the backpack is I've been getting, we've been getting Chinese food recently a lot. And so I found this, this really cute um, uh, fortune cookie. And I thought that's, that's kind of cute. Maybe it's like a, like a magical like spell or something that we could keep in the backpack. You know, like it's a scroll that he found in somewhere. Ooh, Cooper, that that might be super helpful. But let's I'm not I'm not totally sure yet. Let me let's let me just uh I think it's gonna be a pretty easy pattern for the backpack. Let's let's start pretty simple. So I'm gonna start by making uh we're gonna make it like a saddle bag or a bag or like a satchel kind of instead of a backpack. Because he doesn't have the arms for the pot like the you know the what are these called? The straps of the backpack? It wouldn't work very well for this, but I can easily do a satchel around him. So let's do that, and I'll base this backpack based on how big he can actually be. So I'm going to start by chaining, I think we can go like, it's a very tiny bag, but that's okay, right? So you got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm going to start by chaining six. And then I'm just gonna single crochet into, I'm gonna skip the first chain and I'll single crochet into the next uh, one, two, three, four. I'll single crochet one into the next four stitches. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four. And then into the last chain, I'm gonna single crochet. Let's try three. One, two, and three, which should naturally just turn us around like that. And then I can do, yeah, so single crochet three into the last chain. And then I'll do a single crochet into the bottom loop. So that's one, two, three, three single crochets to get to the end. There's one, and I'm gonna work around this tail end as I go. Two, we'll go three right here. And then I'm gonna do three single crochets into this last chain also. One, two, and three. If you're used to my, like, my T-Rex pattern, this is kind of like how I start the T-Rex also. We're basically making a little oval. Okay, that's round one. Round two, I'm gonna skip that first chain, which you can kind of see, or that first single crochet, which you can kind of see under it. Look at this impromptu pattern, by the way. So we're gonna skip this first one, which is actually this one right here. We're gonna start in this next one. Now I'm just gonna do a single crochet all the way around. We're basically gonna make like a little, I don't know how to explain it, like a, like a 
like a bag. I mean, yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna just keep crocheting around basically here, and hopefully, it'll just work out that way. And then at the top, I'll do something fancy for the the actual like flap that keeps it closed. Let's see how it's kind of coming together. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I like that kiwi. Yeah, we should just really stuff the heck out of this bag. I like that. I like that. See, so it's just gonna go like this, and it'll just go up a little bit. We can't make it too tall. Like, I think we can only do like two, one, maybe two more rounds. I think just one, though. Because he's a tiny dude. Very tiny. Uh, we also need name suggestions. I think that'd be fun. We should just do name suggestions. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Because it's going to be a while till I'm ready for a name. So I think, you know, we start suggesting names now and we keep it up consistently. So start a QA. All right, there's a Q&A going on right now uh, on the in the um, in the chat. That's where you can suggest a name. I'll choose my favorite four, and then we'll vote on it near the end of the video. Um, I am going to cut this tail end because we do not need it, and it is annoying. Yeah, if you're gonna suggest a name, go into that uh, Q and A and and put it there. Kirby, oh Nobby, Nobby's a cute name. Oh, there we go. We got. I'm a Kiwi has suggested. Stewart, I like that. Freddy, I like the name Freddy too. That's cute. All right, those are good. Those are that's a good start. We'll be we'll keep that open for a while though. Okay, so is now here's the question: Is that a big enough bag? It'll probably be right here on his back, actually. Well, maybe we'll make it like slightly off like that. And we'll make it go all the way around him behind his, under his arm like that. Go over this side of the arm. Yeah, we'll do one more round for, for safety. Have I ever thought about using crystals for your goblins? Like, you can get shards pretty cheap online. I think they make great pro props. I love that idea. Dude, Zoe... So that's a great idea. I'm totally gonna look that up after this. Where do you get them? Maybe I go on Etsy? I need like cheapo ones though. I don't wanna get like expensive crystals. Or maybe I'll find like, you know also be kind of funny to find like really cute rocks. I can imagine them collecting rocks because rocks are probably hard to come by in the goblin world because everything's made out of yarn. Yarn. I said that weird. Okay, I think that is tall enough for the bag. That can fit a few things, a coin for sure. So the next thing we want to do is uh, make the flap that will sew onto the bag. So I think I'm just gonna, um, okay, so the way I'm gonna do the flap for the bag Let's see how many stitches around is it so when I did okay let me let me just repeat what this pattern is out loud so that that'll help Cooper out also but it'll also help me to figure out what I'm doing here so I started by chaining I, I already lost it chained one two three four five I think I chained six maybe I did four single crochets and then into the last chain I 
did three single crochets. I turned the chain around. I did three single crochets into the back, into the bottom of the chains. And then I did three single crochets into the last chain, which kind of worked around the first one. So that left us with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it should have twelve stitches around because you skip that first stitch in the round two. And then for rounds two, three, and four, three rounds in a row, I just did single crochets all the way around. So now I'm at the end of round, wait, one, two, three, four. I just finished round four. So for round five, I actually wanna turn, chain one, and then single crochet one, two, three, four, five, I think six. Yeah, six makes sense because we're gonna start making the flap. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stop here, chain one, turn, working into, we can do both loops, single crochet six. One, skip the chain and single crochet six. One, two, three, four, five, and this will be six like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, then we're gonna chain one again. Oh, uh, where's the Q and A? It should be at the top of the chat. It says like, Q and A, what should we name the cobalt? Um, so we're chaining one, returning. <laughs> Becky, wait, Becky, you're back. Welcome back, Becky. <laughs> I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna chain another, I mean, I'm gonna, Turn, chain one, and single crochet into all the stitches across. There should be six stitches across. Two, three, four, five. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Okay. And then I think we just need like one more here. Well, actually, no. Now we need to make the button. Actually, should I do? Let's do one more and then I'll do the button. So I'm chaining one turning, single crocheting into all the stitches across again. So that's gonna be six stitches across. One, two, three, four, we'll go five and here will be six. Okay. See, so I'm trying to make it a little bit taller so that when I put something in there, it won't like stretch everything out too much. Okay, so now this last one's gonna be fun. We're gonna chain one. We're going to single crochet two, one, two, and then we're gonna chain two, one, two, and we're gonna skip two. We're gonna skip these two stitches and then single crochet into the last two stitches. One and two like that. And that's gonna create a little hole, which we're gonna use for a button because it'll be a little baggy. Um, okay, now what we're gonna do is let's do let's go ahead and we'll chain one to keep to make a end. We're gonna cut the yarn. We don't need a very long end. We're just gonna use this to sew to hide the end in. Uh, and then we want to make the button thing. And then we'll add straps with this after we're done, like with the majority of this part. So I'm just gonna hide this end into the back of some stitches here. Look at this impromptu pattern writing. I have made a bag like this in the past though, so I'm pretty, uh, I think I know what I'm doing. Okay, so that, yeah, that should be hidden enough. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, we'll just cut that nice and close right there. Okay, next thing we wanna do with this itty bitty stitching is we need to find a good button so that we can sew a button to this and so it can be closed. So let's find a good button for us. We need it to be a pretty small button, maybe a brown one. Yeah, what about this orange or this little one? One of these guys. That little brown one right there would be pretty good, I think. So let's go ahead and open this. Try not to get buttons everywhere. Is 
going to be the trick that we're going to do. You want to see the backpack up close. Oh, you want to see the little guy? Which one? This one? This is, this is, uh, 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 what do we name him? Gooey? I think, because he's a goblin Louie. Yeah, he's me as a goblin. And then here is the one that we made last week, who we named Iroh, with his little button hat. He's so cute. I'm super duper proud of that one. Ooh, I heard that. I heard that. What was that? A curious snail! Oh, thank you. Okay, switch to this. A curious snail, thank you again for your support. Let's add something weird for you. I'm gonna add to the background the, I think it'd be fun to do the reindeer that we made. Can you see it? Oh, here it is, sorry. I'm gonna add this for you, Curious Snail. He's got a magnet on him, obviously. He'll be easy to spot in the background too because of his nice, beautiful nose. I think it'd be cute if he went like right there. Let's just put him here for right now. And we'll switch it up later. Thank you for your support, I really appreciate it. Okay, yeah, I know, you have a lot to make now, huh? Okay, so now we're going to open this baggie up from the bottom so that we can get to that button that we want. We're gonna do it really calm and cool, and we're not gonna get buttons everywhere like I have done in the past. No, get over here, no! There it is, just that one. I think this is the perfect button for it. Right, so good, I love that. Okay, we need a smaller needle. So we're gonna use this needle. Oh, that's a long needle though. Do I have a shorter little needle? I think that's the smallest needle I have for this, which is a bummer, but that's okay. Can I thread this yarn into this needle is the question. Can I do it? No, let's use thread instead. Let's use thread instead. Let's use black thread. I have it at hand and it's easy and it, it'll look nice. So this part's gonna be interesting. First off, I need to thread a needle. Boom. What a pro. I'm not even gonna tie it, I'm just gonna spin it. Okay, so we want the button to be sewn on probably like right around these two stitches. So I'm just gonna go right through this one. Right there, to the center of that stitch. Long needle, is long. Through that button. Maybe enough on the back end. Then we'll go through the next button. Then we'll go through the inside of this stitch. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna double it up so that, just in case, so that the button doesn't come apart. That would be a bum, a button bummer. So we'll go up this stitch right here, maybe like that. Come out, like this, like these in and then into that stitch and then we're gonna do a really good double knot in the back pull everything nice and tight okay gotta double knot this just one two we might I might want to triple knot it I don't know I've heard that triple knotting things actually weakens the knot but do it anyhow because I'm a rebel. Go ahead and cut that nice and short. Okay, so I like that. This looks good. Let's make sure it buttons on. Oh, beautiful. 
Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so cute, you guys. Look at that. That is too freaking cute. Okay, so we got that. Now we just need to give it a long strap so that we can wrap it around our guy. Um, I'm actually gonna unbutton it to make the strap because it'll be a little easier. And I'm just gonna go in through the corner where the, the flap part begins, like right here. Zooming in a little bit for this part. So I'm gonna go in just in this corner right there. Take a loop. I'm gonna make a slip knot with some of the same of that beige yarn there. And I'm just gonna pull that through like this. And we're just gonna chain it all the way up to be as long as we need this to be. So this is gonna depend on how big your creature is. For us, it's gonna be pretty long because it's, yeah, we're, we're gonna have to make a pretty long chain here. But we'll measure it in a second and I'll count my chains before I finish just so you have a number. But I think this is gonna be more of like a suggested chain amount based on how your character looks. We're gonna go under this arm and then over this arm. Actually, that looks actually like the perfect amount of chains. How great was that? Because I do want it to be tight enough so it's not falling off of him. So that's pretty good. So let's count these chains real quick. Okay, uh, Bobby, great question. I will, oh, and Lorraine, great question. Okay, uh, hold on, let me, let me count these stitches real quick and then I'll answer your questions. Oh. Wow, okay, counting chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Looks like we did 19 chains specifically. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to connect these chains to the other side of this. We're going to take our crochet hook and go into where the other side of this connects, which will be right here-ish, under that stitch right there maybe. That's pretty good. And then we'll take this loop. Dude, Zoe, what? 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 Celebrate the first super chat from Zoe. Zoe, thank you. Oh my God, you're amazing. We're gonna add you to the pubes of glory in just a second. That is so cool. You're the best. I super appreciate that. Oh my gosh, Chloe or Zoe. Okay, so now that I pulled that loop through, I'm just gonna go and slip stitch into all the chains all the way up to the start, so. Just go into all these ones and I'm gonna try to make sure that these slip stitches are pretty loose because I don't want to like pull this any tighter than it has to be you know Wow Zoe that's so much I super appreciate you one second I'm almost done with this ah Zoe, do you have a preference on what you'd like in the cubes of glory you can choose any crocheted thing uh, preferably something small enough to fit into the cubes of glory if you can. If not, we'll put it on the top or the side of the cubes. But if you have any preferences, it's now or never. I don't think I really needed to do this slip stitch across, to be honest, but it does add a little bit of weight to the strap, which is nice. And I wanted to get to the beginning of where I started this strap so that I can double knot it with the other end. Yeah, we're just gonna slip stitch across now. It might be hard to get this up around the body of our cobalt later, but we're gonna cross that bridge when we get there. Gosh, Zoe, you rock. Canadian Aussies, who would have known? Canadian Aussies are the bestest. Okay, so now we're gonna, uh, I was gonna slip stitch back into the center, but I actually think, yeah, whatever, we'll do that. We're gonna slip stitch back into the same stitch that we started with. We need this tail end still, too. 
like that. Let's see how that looks. That's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so now we're going to cut the yarn. And we're just going to pull that loop out. And then we're going to take this tail end, thread it on our needle. And then we'll go, I'm going to go into a different stitch than where I started. So I started through this stitch right here. So I'm going to go actually through, I think we'll do through the center of this stitch right here. So that's a little different. Pull it nice and tight. And then I'm going to pull this other one a little tighter too. Just something hideously beautiful. Hideously beautiful. Ooh, what does that mean? Okay. Hideously beautiful. Oh, what a question. Or what a... Okay, I think I might have an idea. And, and it might be in my bag from the stuff that we added last year to the background, but... I just, I think I know a good hideously beautiful thing to add. And I think it'll fit into the cubes of glory, hopefully. If not, let's see, will I have a backup? Maybe. Okay, I'm, I'm just like hiding these ends in here, by the way. If you're wondering, what the heck is you doing? I'm trying to thread this needle. There we go, one. And then we're gonna hide this other end through a different stitch, just like over here on the inside. Something like that. And then we'll just cut them close and we'll have a little baggie. And then we just need to fill the baggie with stuff. Okay, we'll cut these to close, one. Two. They're gonna be on the inside of the bag, so you won't notice them anyhow. Let's close the bag. We'll have to, we'll reopen it in a second. But there's our little little satchel, and then hopefully this will fit around him. It's gonna be a tight fit though. Look at his face getting all squashed in. He's like, oh, oh. There we go. Hey, that fits perfect. Look at that. That fits him so well. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. What a perfect little baggie for him. Okay, that is too cute. That's too cute to boot. To boot. Okay, so now he's got a little baggie. All right, all right. Before I do add more things, let's zoom this out. And let me grab something uh, hideously beautiful. I think it's in here, but I'm not sure. No, he's not. No, okay, hideously beautiful. Okay, hold on. Where are you, Franken Fuzz? Ah, there he is. Okay, this is, I think this will be perfect. So this is for you. This is for you, Zoe. Thank you so much for your support. We're gonna put Frank and Fuzz, look at him. He is, I would say he is hideously beautiful. He's got these beautiful little scars. Gorgeous, beautiful fuzz. I feel like he's hideously beautiful. Look at his silly little arms. I think he's just too cute. He's got little legs, they're off center, which is great because he's hideously beautiful. Yes, perfect, great, I'm so glad you think so, all right. All right, everybody, thank you to Zoe. You're super great. We're gonna put it right up here, uh, and I need to write it down. His name is Frankenfuzz, but, but I'm giving you the option to give him a middle name. So if you got a middle name for me, give me a middle name. But we're gonna say, Zoe Pander Franken 
Buzz. And if you got another name for him, let me know. But let's add him. We're gonna add him right up here. Oh, he fits so perfect also. Frank and Buzz! It's kinda hard to see him. But he's in there. How's that? That's good. Okay. Back to our hands. Okay. Thank you again, Zoe. I really appreciate it. If you got a middle name, let me know. Um, okay. Let's add some things to this backpack real quick. So, here's what I'm thinking we add. First thing is our little scroll. Definitely needs to be added to this backpack. For sure. And then I think it'd be cute if we had just like a gold button or two. So we'll go with like, we'll go with a gold button. Let's go with two different size gold buttons. You know, he needs a little bit of money. He needs some walking around money. So we'll go ahead and we'll put in two gold buttons. Right? Let's see, we need one more thing in there. What could he have? I do think I wanna add this rope to it. Maybe I'll just like even tuck it into the satchel like that. Or maybe it'll be over the satchel like this. You know? That's a lot of rope though. I don't think he needs that much rope. But we could put it in there like this. Or have it go over the bag. Nah, that's too much rope. We need to, we need to limit this rope a little bit. So let's go ahead and rewind this. Oh, okay, question. Frank and Fuzz's middle name is Glitzer Buzz. Oh, what a great, you're just a genius. Just a genius. Glitzer Buzz. Let me write that down real quick. Glit. Glit. Oh, Glitter Buzz. How do you look, how great is this, is this pen that my mom got me for my birthday? Isn't that cute? It's too cute. Okay. Got glitter buzz written down. Okay, so we're gonna do a little less of this rope. I'm, I'm having the rope. And, and then we'll wind this, just the small amount of rope up like this. And then we'll wrap it around like that. Okay, Becky, are there any good movies or books that I suggest for while you're crocheting? I do have some suggestions. I mean, movies, I, there's a bazillion, gazillion movies. I like watching really bad movies. I'm a big fan of watching terrible movies. I just think it's fun. Um... So, like, I just watched Batman Returns or whatever the other day. Like, the one with Michael Keaton. And that movie was terrible. And I loved it. Ugh. There we go. Okay, that is an overflowing bag, I think. We'll go ahead and close that bag a little bit. There we go. He's got his rope in there. That's beautiful. Okay, next thing we want to add, I really liked the idea of doing a leaf hat, um, but I think it'd be kind of fun to do use this stick to go through the bag like this, and then have a leaf off of it like that. That's cut like like a leaf umbrella almost. Also, he needs his dagger in the side of him like this, because doy. Right, he needs a little dagger. You know, you never know what you're going to run into out in the wild. So, he needs his dagger. I love that stick. I just love this stick. I know it's so funny. I was walking with my mom yesterday, and I found it. And I was like, oh, I love this stick. And my mom was like, okay. <laughs> Weirdo. He definitely looks like he's a traveling kobold, though. Okay, so we need to crochet a leaf for that stick. And that's I'm not even going to tutorial this. I'm just going to do it. Um... 
Oh, bye, Cosmo. Thanks for joining. Is that one... Wait. Is that the one with the bat nipples? What? What? What are you talking about? <laughs> That's a weird question. What? Oh, is it the Batman one? No, no, it's not. That's the next one I want to watch, actually, is the one with the bat nipples. Um, and then podcasts. I actually really like listening to podcasts while I uh, crochet. My favorite podcast right now is uh, still My Brother, My Brother, and Me. I love them. I think they are super funny. Uh, if you've never listened to them before, I highly suggest it. They're super funny. Uh, just a bunch... Just a brothers just being silly and cute um so i highly suggest that one uh other podcasts uh let's see i like listening to DD podcasts um i've recently been listening to not another DD podcast uh which is by some people from college humor i like that one a lot um if you like D D and you uh really want to Wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I need to think for a second. That needs to be a single crochet, I think. Yeah, so this needs to be a... I'm making a leaf right now, and I'm just kind of like making it up as I go. I think I'm going to basically use the leaf pattern from the... Uh... From the sunflower. So if you want to make one too, that's kind of what I'm working off of. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I think it is the George Clooney has the, has the bat nipples. Double. You collect bones, Connor? What? What kind of bones? I'll do another half double. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. Yeah, we'll do half double. I just want to crochet this tight enough so it's not too floppy, if I can avoid it. It's going to be a long leaf, though. That's good. That's fine. One. I see. I should have made it wider here in the back, because now it's just like a long, skinny leaf, and that's kind of just weird. Let's do um, double crochet here instead. Um, but yeah, what I was saying is if you like D&D, &D, uh, I suggest um, there's a, the, the College Humor uh, made a website called um, Dropout, which is like a, it's like a streaming service for crochet, or for, for crochet, it's like a st streaming service for, um, for their YouTube channel kind of. But they have this D and D game called um, Dimension Twenty on there, that's hosted by a uh, someone named Brennan Lee Mulligan, and it is so, so, so good. Highly, highly recommended, especially if you like D and D. It is, I believe, my favorite uh, source of D and D. Um, so yeah, highly suggested. Um, okay, now we're working our way back and we're gonna crochet around this tail end as we go to make this leaf. And then when we get to the end, I think I'll make it so that it's got a hole in it so that I can put it around the stick. I probably should have prepped the stick a little bit by like baking it or something. I think there's ways to like make sure that there's not like rot in the stick, but Whatever. I like to live dangerously. Uh, and then we'll do doubles. One. 
two, and then a triple. I also think we should give this guy at least one kind of customized thing, whether that's a, uh, a ring or something that makes him stand out a little bit too. And then this last stitch, we want to make a half double be right there. Is it this one? And then a single. Feels like a lot. And then a slip into that stitch like that. That's a leaf. Cool. Perfect. And then we'll just cut it. And I'm just going to hide both of these ends because I'm not actually using these ends to tie it onto the piece. The end is just going to go right through like this, right into it. And then he's got this little tiny leaf on a stick. Very cute. go over there that's weird whatever well I far okay let's hide this end into the back of a few stitches we'll cut both these ends one and two. Okay, next thing we need to do, uh, actually last thing we need to do is get this on the stick somehow. So I think if we just go right here, like right, this stitch right here, we stretch it out a little bit like this, you know? Then we can just shove the stick through right there. Ooh, this might be tough. This might be difficult. I don't know how much I can... Hmm. Might need a bigger, bigger boat. There we go, come on, wait. There we go. No, no, no. There we go, I got it. Leaf on a stick. Like that, that's cute. And then it goes right here, between his backpack. And now he's got a little umbrella. That is too freaking cute. Tell me that's not adorable. That is so cute. Okay, we need to add something like a ring or something to him. But in the meantime, while we're doing that, here's a quick close up of everything about this guy, real quick. And I need to choose a name. So we got a bunch of name suggestions. So let me choose my top favorites. Let's see. I like. Okay, okay, Becky. We'll choose. We'll go with that one. We got one. Oh my God, there's such good names, you guys. Boom. I like. That 
that one and Oh my gosh, you guys, these are seriously some of the best names you guys have given so far, in my opinion. Okay. Which name do you like most for our Cobalt? Boom. Boom. go all right name suggestions here we go your name options are dave fit fritz mcnash which i thought was cute balmy or boomy i really like that one and kian so the choice is yours now which name do you like most And we'll let that go till the end, and then I'll choose a winner and all that other stuff. Okay. Uh, last thing I want to do while you guys are choosing that name is I want to give him something customized. Uh, I'm thinking a ring of some kind. Uh, maybe a golden ring. It sounds good. So maybe we go with, like... Do we have some of our special gold guns? Maybe. I think this is good. Let's use this gold. It's the same color gold that we use for our dwarf, actually. I think it's the exact same yarn. So, I'm thinking we either do a ring on the... I'm thinking the ear. Or like the ear horn, kind of. So let's do that. I gotta be careful while I do this, though. that though yeah that's a cool that's a cute idea okay we're gonna go back in and then out through here like that that is cute oh my god that added so much to him in my opinion the smallest little addition and I just feel like it's so like it just adds a lot. Makes him look more human. Not human, but, you know, anthropological. All right, now we're gonna double knot this. One, not too tight. And two, we'll cut close. Like that. And then we'll just stuff it in to the body. And we'll pull this loop out just a little bit like that. Oh, he looks so cool. Looks so cool. Okay, what name what name have you guys voted on? Oh my god, it's so close. Wow. I should totally make I, I have done it a few times out of chunky velvet yarn. Um, I made, actually, I made this. I made this uh, in October, Becky. This gigantic ghost using my ghost pattern to test it out. It looks great, though. It's just huge. Huge mungo. Big old ghost. But same pattern. Really, really easy to make. So I do want to do that. I've made some goblins using chunky yarn too. So I totally can. Okay, so what name did you guys suggest? Wow, I love this guy. Oh my gosh. Look at this crew, by the way, that we've made so far. Over the past few live streams. This in like January and start of February. Look at these guys. They, they look like a... They actually look like a crew. They're so cute. Oh, I love them. I love them. This one might be one of my favorites, though. Thank you for suggesting to customize them rather than make a new one. Uh, I think that was a really good move. So good choice to the chat. Oh, I love them. 
super, super strong, super strong little dude. Okay. The coast is as big as my head, yes. All right, so what name do you guys go with? Oh, it's still a close call. I'll leave it up while we choose a winner for the giveaway. So we did a giveaway in this live stream. You all could have won. We're gonna choose the winner for a dragon uh, crochet kit giveaway. And actually I have the materials all out and about. So let me show you. Comes with, it's a, all this fancy stuff. Look at these cute little, I, I even added like a little stuff around it because I just thought it was too cute not to. Um, obviously it's packaged a little better than this. But, and then it comes with eyes and stuff as well. And then obviously the pattern, the video tutorial, all that stuff. We're choosing a winner though. And the winner is coming completely randomized. Let's go to the forms. Can you still hear me? You can hear me, right? I think you can hear me. All right. Wow, 124 people entered the giveaway. Very good job. Thank you. Thank you everybody that entered. I wasn't sure how many people would enter, so that's really cool. And we will choose one at random. 124. Okay. One, two, four, randomizer. Random number generator. Okay. All right, we have a winner. We have a randomly number generated winner. Thank you for the drum roll. <laughs> The winner is Priya John William. I don't know if you're in the chat right now, but congratulations, Priya. I will be emailing you after this uh, live stream to send you all the details. And congratulations to you. I Yeah, thank you for entering the giveaway. Thank you to everybody that's entered the giveaway, by the way. Super strong thank you. Also... Let's see how many likes this video has so far. This video has 130 likes so far. And again, if we get 250 before the next live stream, so next, uh, between now and next week, I will be doing another giveaway next week. So like this video down below. Congratulations again to Priya. And, okay, yeah, 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 okay, good. Uh, yeah, like this video down below. Obviously, subscribe to the channel. Next week, we are going to be making an anatomical human heart. Now, I don't know if I have any. I thought I had one somewhere. Is this one? Yeah, this is what we're making. We're going to be making an anatomical human heart next week for Valentine's Day uh, on February 9th. So next Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, same time, same place. We're going to be making an anatomical human heart, uh, and I'm excited because I love this pattern. It's actually one of the first patterns I ever came out with, and it's super fun to make. Uh, it's a little complicated, but I just think it's really cool, and just the idea of having like an actual anatomically sized human heart is really neat. Um, yes, it should be very interesting, Goblin Quinn. Thank you so much again for joining. Happy hooking. Oh, wait. The winner of the name, oh my gosh, he took it. Okay, we're ending the vote. We're ending the poll. The winner of the name is Bami. B-O-M-M-I, Bami. Or Boomy? No, Boomy would be two O's, so Bami. Bami! Oh my god, Bami, you're so cute! Oh my god, I love him! And his little bag with his, all his little goodies. 10 out of 10. That was great. Okay, let me get Jimbo to say bye real quick. Oh, you're having surgery? Good luck, Virginia. Okay, one second. Let me get Jimbo. Jimbo. Yes, you. Hi. Come on. Come here. Say goodbye. Come here. Oh, 
big stretch. Okay. Let's switch the cameras. Say bye. Say bye. Don't, don't, don't fight me. You're the one that wanted to get in here. What? Where are you going? Say bye to them. Come on, say, say, say bye. Goodbye, he says. Thank you guys for joining. Pasta la pizza. Happy hooking. And oh my gosh, stop when you hang up. Oh my gosh. God, you're so bad. Uh, stop. Stop. Say stop, Jimbo. You don't want to. Well, say bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.